Hey, what's up? Jason here from Unity3D.College. In this video, I'm going to go over adding buttons to your custom inspectors, how you can do it, and how it comes in useful. So here I've got a little demo set up with an enemy, and if you look right here at the script, you'll see that there's a die button. So imagine a case where you're playing a game, you know, building out your game, and you want a quick, easy way to just destroy enemies from the inspector. Now, if you can just delete them, then hey, you can just select them and delete them. But a lot of time you have some extra logic that goes on when they die. Maybe you gain experience, or they go back into a pool, or something else happens. So adding a little button like this that I can just select the guy and click and have him go through this whole process makes it really helpful. So let me show you how we set that up. The first thing you'll see is we just have an enemy script, and this enemy script is super simple. All we have on here is a method called die. It could have any number of other things, but this is just a demo of destroying it with this button. So it doesn't really do anything other than die. But we also have this enemy editor. Now if we look in the project view, you'll see that the editor script is under a folder named editor. All the custom inspectors need to be under a subfolder named editor. And this can be a subfolder anywhere in your project. It doesn't have to be off the root. You can have a scripts slash editor or an enemies slash scripts slash editor. As long as it's in an editor folder, you're good to go. Now let's take a look at that script. The enemy editor works by first inheriting from the editor base class and then you give it the custom editor attribute right here and pass in the type that this is the editor for and what that's going to do is make it so that this target is that type so this target will be an enemy and this will also show up only when you select enemies and when there's an enemy component now the way we implement it is to override the on inspector GUI method and then the first thing we usually do is call the base on inspector GUI. This just makes it draw the normal stuff that's normally there by default if you don't have a custom inspector. But the part that I really want to focus on here is the GUI layout button. So you just add this if statement. And what's going to happen is every frame in the editor, this is going to get evaluated. And if you click that frame, the code inside the if statement will be executed. And in our case, we cast the target as an enemy and call the die method. Now, let me go back into the editor real quick and let's just add, um, or right here, let's select the enemy and just add one more script to it, or one more attribute to him. So I'll just add a serialized field. Ah, whoops, if I can get my auto complete right. And then I'll do a private int health. And let's set it to like 100. And I just want to show how the base call matters and, and what, what it's doing here. So as you see here, it shows up health is 100 now once it finished recompiling. Now let me go back into the editor script and remember if I disable this on inspector GUI what's going to happen is that health field is no longer going to be rendered. So if I don't do that I have to actually go in, see it's missing, and implement those myself. Usually I just let them kind of auto implement. Now I want to show one other case where this can be useful and it's a slightly different situation and that's with a spawn point. So here let me just delete this enemy and you see here I've got a spawn point set up and there's a button for add destination. So I've used this in situations where I'm spawning NPCs and they have destinations that they walk to and I want them to be spawned as children and I don't want to have to manually go in there. So what I can do is add a button like this that just adds a child at edit time it also work at runtime, but it usually uses this at edit time. And I just click through to add destinations. And now while my current destinations here are just a transform, just an empty game object, uh, a lot of the time what I'll have is some kind of a linked system where there's actually some code that needs to go in, some fields that need to get set up for these destinations, and um, even custom inspectors so I can see where they are. But the, like I said, again, the point was to show that these buttons are useful both in editor, like when you're building, and at runtime. I've used them for both cases more times than I can count. So uh, let's look at the script real quick, I guess, before I wrap this up. So if we go in and edit the spawn point script, you see we just have a number field. It's not actually showing up. That's because if we go back over to spawn point editor again, I have commented out the on inspector GUI. Yeah, but let's look at this in on inspector GUI override for the spawn point editor. Here you can see this is pretty common. We're just caching the spawn point already cast as a spawn point. Again, it's because we're using custom editor of type spawn point that target will be a spawn point. Um, and then I'm calling the on inspector base but then I call the button check and then just create a new game object, name it destination, and set the child. So again, 
very similar to what we did before, but I also want to show you one extra little bonus thing here, and that's the toolbar option. So we had a number field on there, and to say I want to set a field on this um, inspector, I can do it with the button click too. Like I want to click a button and it sets a value to something, but I can also use the toolbar option here. So here you see I've got GUI layout.toolbar, and I pass in the existing value for it. So the existing value for number, and then an array of strings. And let's see what that looks like in the editor. And jump back over here, and as soon as it recompiles, you can see we've got the number from the on inspector GUI base call. But we also have these buttons. They're kind of like buttons, but they're a toolbar of buttons that we can select that set a value. And again, we don't have to just set a value. This could like totally change the layout of everything. It could modify you know, what kind of enemy this is. Maybe it switches like to a caster and a whole bunch of stuff changes, or as we switch to a sword fighter and then a bunch of other things change. So it's just another way that you can put in buttons where you can have multiple that are kind of like single select buttons. Anyway, I hope this is kind of helpful. There's a whole lot you can do with custom inspectors and buttons in particular. I really love using them. So please share this video if you like it. Don't forget to hit thumbs up and subscribe. And uh, thanks for watching.